Hi there, this is Math 6, Unit 8, Lesson 11, Deviation from the Mean. So we're going to study the distances between data points and the mean and see what they really tell us. All right, so the first activity is called Shooting Hoops, Part 1. So we're going to have lots of shooting hoops today. It says Elena, Jada, and Lan enjoy playing basketball during recess. Lately, they have been practicing free throws. They record the number of baskets they make out of 10 attempts. Here are their data sets for 12 school days. So for example, on school day number 1, Elena made four out of ten attempts. Jada made two out of ten, and Lynn made three out of ten. So not really good for free throw attempts <laughs> if you're going for that, right? But there are other days, like here, where Elena made nine out of her ten attempts. Pretty good. Jada made six, and Lynn made five. So some days they did well, some days not quite so well, right? So these are their school days. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. It wants you to first of all calculate the mean number of baskets each player made and compare the means and what do you notice. So we want to compare the means for each one. All right. Um, so we have Elena, we have Jada, and we have Lynn. So when we calculate their means, we're going to add up the sum of all their data values. Okay. And I'll tell you when you add all these up, you end up with 60. This all equals 60. This one equals 60, and that one actually equals 60. I'm going to do a little faster here than normal. Okay, so you can definitely add them up if you want to double check me. There are 12 possible, so we're going to divide each one of these by 12, and we're going to come up with a mean of 5, a mean of 5, a mean of 5. So what do we notice? They are all the same. Okay, so they all have the same mean. So what does that mean tell us? Okay, what it tells us here is that on average, they each can make 5 out of 10 free throw attempts. Right? They on average make 5 out of the 10. That's, that's what it tells us here. So great, they all have the same average. They're all the same. Okay, but when we look at the numbers, we can see there's a lot of, what's the word again? Variability in how consistent these guys were at making free throws. Anywhere from Elena making one on one day and nine on another. That's a big difference. I'm counting on her to make at least five out of 10 according to her average, but we can see that some days she just can't make them at all. And other days she's great. So. When we talk about the means, we want to have a way of also talking about and measuring the variability. Okay, Measuring the variability, or again, the other word we talk about is the spread, is what we're, what's important when we look at means. You want to be able to compare means, and that's what we're doing today. Okay, Let's take a look here at the next activity. So here are the dot plots showing. The number of baskets Elena, Jada, and Lynn each made over 12 school days. So we took the same data and we put it in the dot plot. Okay, On each dot plot, mark the location of the mean with a the triangle, then contrast the dot plot distributions. And then write two or three sentences to describe the shape and spread. So our mean was here at 5, right? So we can put that here. Here's our mean for this one. Here's our mean for this one. And our mean for this one. So the means are all the same. When we take a look at the shape and the spread, we see that Elena's are much more spread out from one to nine. Jada, a little bit tighter of a spread there. And Lynn's are all closer together, right? The spread gets less, you know, so it gets a smaller spread down here. Okay, so we have a narrow spread. This one is the most spread. <laughs> spread, E-A-D, okay, all right. We can also see here in terms of symmetry, this one looks like it's symmetric in terms of you don't have big numbers here and there. This one has this point right there, that big point, so that has a peak like we talked about before, so it's not symmetric as far as we can tell. And this one, it hard, not much symmetry going on, but it definitely has a narrow spread. right? So those are things that you notice looking at this here. So. Discuss the following questions with your group. Would you say that all three students played equally well? Do they all play equally well? 
Well, that's a great question. Okay, this is the number of baskets that they made. Is this equally well in terms of what they're doing here? Well, it depends on how you look at it. I would say no. And the reason I would say no is that Lynn was more consistent. Okay? And we're talking about what does playing well mean? Yeah, we could say Elena had a really good couple games, but she also had some really bad games as well. Lynn overall played well the whole time. She was very reliable in terms of a player. I know when I put her in the game, I'm going to get for sure my five baskets. Maybe a couple times not so much, but almost always it's going to happen. With Elena, I don't know what I'm going to get. It could be anywhere from one to nine points. Would I say they played equally consistently? Again, we would say no. We would say Lynn, though, is the most consistent. Oops. And oftentimes in sports, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for the consistency to be the player you want to put in the game. So if you could choose one player in your basketball team based on their records, who would you choose? For me, I'd go ahead and put Lynn in there because I want to have the person who's the most consistent and most likely to make those points that I need. Now you might be a person who says, you know what, I want to take a risk. I'm going to put Elena in there because I know that I might get that nine and that could work as well. All right, so here we are in activity three, shooting hoops, part three. I'll slide that down there for you. The table shows Elena, Jada, and Lynn's basketball data from an earlier activity. Recall that the mean of Elena's data, as well as Jada and Lynn's data, was five. That was our mean value there, right? So record the distances between each of Elena's scores and the mean. Okay, so the mean was five, right? So the distance between four and five is one. The distance between five and five is zero. 5 minus 1, the distance there is 4. The distance between 5 and 6 is 1. Between 5 and there's 4. And we have 2, 3, 3, 2, 2, uh, 0, and 2. Those are our distances from 5. Not worrying about you know positive, negative things that way. Again, we're just talking about the distance from 5. Now, think about this real quick. That when we talk about absolute value, we mentioned in our homework the other day, absolute value is what? That is the distance from zero, right? So we're talking about distance from five, so it's a little similar to the kind of absolute value. That'll come up again later on in life when you talk about the actual formula, but we'll talk, get there in a bit. Now, find the average of the distances in the table. So these are all the distances. We're going to now find the average of all those distances. So to do that, we need to add these values up. And when we add these values up, so we're going to add together all those values, and they equal, in this case here, 24. So 1 plus 4 plus 1 plus 4 plus 2 plus 3, 3, 2, 2, and 2 all equal 24. This all equals 24. So we want to find the average of the distances. So we'll take the 24. So that's the sum. So the sum of the averages, sum of averages, and we're going to divide it by the number of data points, the data points. So in our case here, it's 24 divided by 12, which is going to equal 2. Okay? So the average of our distances is 2. That's the average of our distance. The average distance away, every point is, is 2. We call that the mean absolute deviation. And again, that absolute comes from that idea of an absolute value. The mean is that, is that average, right? So the typical, this is like our, our typical um, absolute. So distance and our spread, OK? It's kind of like our typical distance and spread is what we're talking about here of the data. And so for Elena, her typical distance and spread, her mean absolute deviation is 2. All right. So that means what we're talking about here, we'll look at that in a second, is that most of the data points are about 2 points away from 2 points away from the mean. So if the mean is here at 5, here's 4, 3, and then here's 6 and 7, most of her data is right here between 2 points this way and two uh, that way of the mean. 
That's what the mean absolute deviation is talking about. So for Elena, her mean absolute deviation, or MAD for short, is two. Now let's find the mean absolute deviation for Jada. Again, we're gonna find the distance from five. So the distance from five here is gonna be three, one, zero, one, 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 two, two, one, three, two. So that's the distance each of these values are from five. So think about it as doing it's like five minus two, five minus four, right? Now when you have a six, you need to think of it as like more like six minus five, six minus, right? Something bigger than five, think of it that way. And that's how we're getting those numbers. Now we're gonna add those up. When you add those up, what does it equal? It equals 18. So now we'll take the 18 right there, and we're gonna divide it by the number of data Okay, that's our number possible, 12. So 18 divided by 12 is 1.5. So Jada's mean absolute deviation is 1.5. All right, let's do one more. We gotta find Lynn now. We liked Lynn before. We thought she was the best player to add to our team. She was more the most consistent, if you call that. So we're gonna find her mean absolute deviation. Again, all from five. So three is two away, one away, one away, one away, zero, zero, two away, zero, one away, one away, one away, two away. Already I can see lots of zeros and ones. This is looking like a lower sum already. So what's the sum total here? When you add all this up, you get 12. So we'll take that 12 and we'll divide it by the number of data points, which is 12, and we get one. So Lynn's mean absolute deviation is actually one. So now let's compare this, right? So the mean absolute deviation for Elena was two. The mean absolute deviation for Jada was 1.5. And the mean absolute deviation for Lynn was one. So this is talking about that variance, okay? So the larger the mean absolute deviation, that means there's more variability or variance in the data. So the larger the MAD, mean absolute deviation, means there's more variability or variance in the data. And we saw that before. Again, it, the data points are here. We can see where the mean is at. The mean is located right here, the red dot, at five and at five and at five, but when we talk about how spread out is that data, how much does it deviate or change from there, we can see the mean absolute deviation here is two, and the other ones are 1.5. So we can already see this spread is very large for, from one to nine. This spread's a little bit tighter, and this one's a little less, right? So that's our, our spread that we can see. The mean absolute deviation means, let's go out about two points from our mean, so here to here, and most of the data is in that region there. That's a mean absolute deviation of two. We went two this way and two that way, All right? Here our mean absolute deviation is one and a half. So we can go out from five to about six and a half, and then here. So that's our, oops, I should go above it, just like the other one. And we can make a little chart like this, and we can kind of fill that in. So it's saying that all of our points are in this, or most of our points are within this range. And for Lynn, she's within one. So we go one lower and one higher. And what we see, again, just visually, we can see that there's less variability in Lynn. And most of our points are within one point of the mean, one, of, one lower than five, one higher than five. And we can see we get most of the data points in those boxes. I mean, how many points are outside in this one? there are three on the outside. Over here there's one, two, three, four, five on the outside up here, and here there are one, two, three, four. So of the 12, most of the points are in those ranges there. This one's a little bit funky, but again, two of them are super close, right? So a little bit more, but that's okay. We're talking about that spread. The main thing is larger the mean absolute deviation means there's more variability or variance in the data. It's a bigger spread. So this has a greater spread than this one there.
All right, and I'm gonna stop there for this work here. I'm not gonna do the next activity, it's optional. This is great if you wanna practice some more or do some more, and so hopefully you do that in class. If not, that's okay, just kinda depends on time. Let's take a look at your summary. The summary is right here, and it says, we use the mean of a data set as a measure of cent the center of its distribution. So the mean is a measure of center of its distribution. But two data sets of the same mean could have very different distributions. And that's our thing. If they had the same mean, they could have very different distributions. And that's what we saw with the basketball uh, uh, thing there, right? Take a look at these two dot plots. What we see here is that it has a mean of 21 and a mean of 21 there. But there's definitely a difference in terms of how spread out or the variation of that data is, right? So that measure of spread, the measure of spread, is what we call the mean absolute deviation. It means we're finding all the averages and we're comparing those uh, with one another to see how spread apart they typically are. So when we find the distance between each data value and the mean, and then we calculate the mean of those distances. And that's what we're doing with our measure of spread, seeing how far away or how far spread out something is. And it helps us solve that there. So again, we can take those same numbers. We can look at that distance from the mean here. Okay, you say, okay, here are the data points, the distance from the mean, they're pretty close, ones and zeros there. And when we do that, the values in the second row of the table right there show us the distances between the first row which is the mean right or sorry the other the points so the mean of these distances <clears throat> is the mean absolute deviation and that's our key term there and that mean absolute deviation for the first set with a big spread was 1.2 with the second one uh, sorry with the first set 1.2 and the next one you see as is, is 5.6 so we can see a, a bigger spread there. Again, looking back here, this is a mean absolute deviation of 1.2, and this is a mean devi absolute deviation of 5.6. And so you can see this has a much larger spread. This has a tight little spread there, very narrow, which means there's less variance. So less variance here, and that's what you wanna see. This is a, the mean absolute deviation is a measure of variability. So we're measuring how much something varies. And that's the point of today's lesson. We're gonna practice some of this on your homework. So take some time to make sure you do that properly and then check it uh, with the solutions here in just a second. See you in a minute. All right, here we go. Homework for unit eight, lesson 11, deviation from the mean. Han recorded the number of pages that he read each day for five days. The plot, dot plot is shown here, so you can see how much he read. Is 30 pages a good estimate of the mean of the number of pages? Like, would it be a good idea to put a triangle here for 30? Would that be a good idea is the question there. What do you think? I would say here, in terms of explaining your reasoning, we'd probably say no, and that's because it's not really even in the middle of the data. There are only two values to the left, and there's three to the right, and one of them is quite large. So we'd probably say this would not be a great, um, a great place to put your, your mean estimate there. So probably a little bit too low. Again, you're looking for balance overall when you're talking about a mean. And do you see that being a place of balance? Probably not. So we probably answer no to that one there. Now it says find the mean number of pages that Han did read. So we're gonna find the mean here to see what it's actually gonna be. So the means can be found by adding up the points 25, plus 28, plus 32, plus 36, plus 42, and dividing that sum by the number of points, one, two, three, four, five. And we do that, we end up with 163 divided by five, which in our case here equals 32.6. So as a mean, we'd put a triangle between 32 and 33, somewhere about there, and there's our 32.6. Does that look like a better balance point there? I would probably say, yeah, that looks like a better place to balance the whole set of data. Now use the dot plot and the mean to complete this table. Okay, so we know that our mean is 32.6. 
Now you might want to use a calculator here because in our practice ones, we didn't have a decimal. So make sure you're, you're getting these facts, these numbers right. We want to find the distance from the mean for each one of the pages. So we do 32.6 and we subtract 25 and that equals 7.6 and 25 as the mean is on this side over here. So that's to the left of it. 28 is also to the left. So again, we'll do 32.6 and we're gonna subtract 28 and we get 4.6 here. This is also to the left of it. When we get 32, 32 is gonna be 32.6 minus 32 and that's just simply 0.6 also to the left of it here. But watch what we do when we get to the, the large number. If I did 30, Six, or if I do 32.6 minus 36, I end up with a negative 3.4. But remember, we're doing a distance, and distance means it's like taking the absolute value of something, so I don't worry about negative 3.4, I just call it 3.4, right? It's the absolute value. The other way of thinking about it is I could just subtract 36 minus 32.6, and I get the same number, right? But it's already positive for me. So here, again, I do 32.6. I do the mean minus the point 42, which is negative 9.4. But we take the absolute value because we're talking about the distance. And so I have 9.4. These are both to the right of that mean there. Now we want to calculate the mean absolute deviation of the data. To calculate the mean absolute deviation of data, we need to find the sum of those points and divide the sum by the number of things we have in the data set, five. So the sum of all of this is 7.6 plus 4.6 plus 0.6 plus 3.4 plus 9.4. The sum of all that is 25.6. Now we'll take that value, 25.6, and divide it by five, because there are five points in the data set. One, two, three, four, five. And when we do that, we end up with our mean absolute deviation is 5.12. So our mean absolute deviation is 5.12 for this data set. Meaning that in general, let's go back up here real quick, in general, our, most of our data is going to be 5.12 away from our mean. Our mean was at 32.6, so we kind of go up to 37.6 or 37. Uh, yeah, 37. Point whatever. So somewhere out there. Here we drop down about five, so we go 31, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? And that is our mean absolute deviation, which you can see right there. Mean absolute deviation is our green bar kind of showing how that works from the measure of center, okay? That's our measure of variance that we can see. All right, number two. It says 10 sixth grade students recorded their amounts of time it took to travel to school. The dot plot shows uh, their travel times. So how many 10 sixth grade kids going to school? Here's our dot plot. The mean travel time for these students is approximately nine minutes. The mean absolute deviation is 4.2 minutes. Okay, so the mean is gonna be here somewhere about nine. All right, that's our mean, the triangle. And the mean absolute deviation is about four, meaning that it's about four minutes from nine. So nine plus four, or nine plus four is about 13. Let's so maybe go out this way about there. And then about uh, nine minus four, maybe somewhere about five. So most of the points are in that range. And when we look at that, that looks about right, doesn't it? So which number of minutes, nine or 4.2, is a typical amount of time for 10 sixth grade kids to travel to school? Well, typical is talking about your average. And average is a way of talking about the mean. So in our case here, we would say nine. That is a typical amount of time for kids to get to school. So based on the mean and the mean absent deviation, Jada believes that travel times between five and 13 minutes are common for this group. Do you agree? Well, here is five and 13. That's gonna be inside of this space here. Does that seem like that bubble of space, that cluster, is the common for the group? Overall, it looks like it seems to be most of the people are in that range. 
Now how would you say that for real? Well, we would take our mean and we can subtract it from the mean absolute deviation. And we come up here with 4.8, okay, or about five. We could also take the mean and add the mean absolute deviation. And we come up with, in this case here, 13.2. Uh, so would we expect to have data points between five and 13? Yes, we would. That makes sense because these points are about 4.2 deviations away from the mean of nine. A different group of 10th and 6th grade students also recorded their travel times at school. Their mean travel time was also 9 minutes, but the mean absolute deviation was 7 minutes. What could the dot plot of the second data set be? Okay, so their mean is here at 9, right? But because the mean absolute deviation is 7 minutes, they could go this way 7, or they could go this way 7. So what is 9 minus 7? That goes down to 2 and nine plus seven goes up to 16. So we could see data anywhere from two to 16 in terms of this other group there, compared to five to 13. Again, it has a larger mean absolute deviation, so we expect the spread to be greater. In an archery competition, scores for each round are calculated by averaging the distance of three arrows from the center of the target. An archer has a mean distance of 1.6 inches. So think of it like this. Here's our target right there. And on average, they're about 1.6 inches away. We'll pretend this is like 1.6, right? So maybe there, there, and there. Okay. So these all average together to be a distance of 1.6 inches away. Now the mean absolute distance uh, of one and a mean and a, and a mean absolute deviation of 1.3. So this is our mean and this is our mean absolute deviation. So they're all within 1.3 of that. Okay. In the second round the archer's arrows are farther from the center. So farther from the center which means the average is going to be greater. The further away, more like out here, but they're more consistent. More consistent means a um, smaller, sorry, mean absolute deviation. So what values for the mean and MAD and MAD would fit here? Well the average needs to be greater so we probably want it something greater than we want a, a mean needs to be greater than 1.6 so we could say something like 2. 2 inches would be just fine right? It's greater. But because it's more consistent we want an MAD that is less than what we had before 1.3 so you could say the MAD is one, right? That's even more consistent. Even though it's a little bit, not too much different, it's still better because less than 1.3. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.